Thanks for joining us tonight for our election night coverage here on Channel 97. I'm Tyson Davis. I'm in the multimedia area of the Communication Arts Department. And tonight we're converging. <laughs> it's journalism and multimedia. Thank you all for being here. This is Ann Healy and Jeff Carr and Steve Stepanek. And they are our journalism area within the Communication Arts Department. So we really are converging, right? Sure thing. If I say so. if you, whatever you say. <laughs> it feels good, Tyson. If it feels good, do it. That's uh, maybe where we're going to go with this tonight, because maybe some things have felt good within the media and they went with it. And I'm not sure that they should have. I'm just not sure. And I want y'all's opinion on that. But really, this conversation about politics and the media and the relationship between the two came out of a brief conversation that Ann and I had in my office one day we were talking about I was saying something about giving out to the world and getting back from it and you made the um, comparison of that to the media and the way media treats politicians media both print and uh, bro television broadcast the way they treat politicians and what should we expect back from politicians whenever they're given that kind of treatment or is that kind of treatment typical because of the adversarial relationship between government and the media. The rent isn't the only thing. The rent is too damn high. It's too damn high, so is the level of testiness. Run a race as a man. From a Democrat angry that he didn't get Barack Obama's endorsement. He could take his endorsement and really shove it. To a Republican running for governor of Ohio. I have never seen the kind of negative, smearing, lying stuff that this, these Democrats have done. I almost gag when I hear these Republicans. And if it's not these Republicans or these Democrats, it's these reporters. For instance, the one getting an earful from an aide to New York's Republican candidate for governor. You're out of line. You're out of line. You're off the and you're terrible journalists. Thank you very much. A reporter for the Fox 5 station in Las Vegas says he got shushed by Republican Sharon Angle. Sharon, can we talk to you about why... Uh, well, I have to get on, but I just want to ask you to get out the vote. The Angle campaign says she didn't shush him, must have been someone else. Though CNBC's second Angle sure makes it look like Sharon Angle yeah, was the one. But maybe some politicians should be shh, shushing themselves. This Texas Democrat lost it when a woman in the audience interrupted. Well, tell the truth then. Ma'am, don't, don't accuse me of not saying the truth. And when someone else called his conduct inappropriate. It's not appropriate to, to also determine either. But the testiest tantrum of them all, the standard by which testy tantrum should be judged, featured an unknown candidate for Stark County, Ohio, treasurer. I have been a Republican in times good, and I have been a Republican in times bad. This was one of the bad times. Phil Davison did not get his party's nomination. Albert Einstein issued one of my most favorite quotes. In the middle of opportunity, excuse me, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. The mood is enough to make even a presidential impersonator testy. If Sarah Palin shoots her mouth off one more time, so help me God. The only time I lie is when I say I don't smoke cigarettes. The only time he lies is when he says he smokes cigarettes. The only time he lies is when he says he smokes cigarettes. The job is stressful, so get off his back. Maybe it's a tiny cigarette. Ginny Moose. Drastic times require what? CNN. Drastic measures, yes! Who said that? New York. Thank you! So what do you think? <laughs> well, uh, we were specifically talking about this election cycle. Okay. Yes, this election. Um, because uh, so many of the politicians running for races, both in Georgia and outside of Georgia, have uh, kind of avoided giving the standard interviews to the media, uh, making themselves as available to the media, and really have put forth their platform in, uh, by, more by what they do than what they say in that. And that's what the media has sort of gone with in this election cycle, it seems. And our, my question, I guess, to you, or our question to each other was, does that, is that what the media should be doing? And are they becoming maybe de facto advertising vehicles for these people without actually, you know, looking at issues and policies and so forth? That's a good point because I remember us specifically talking about Anderson Cooper 360 and the fact that Christine O'Donnell, who is a Senate 
nominee, the Republican Senate nominee, but backed by the Tea Party in Delaware, that she will not, to date, give Anderson Cooper an interview. However, Anderson Cooper was leading his news with Christine O'Donnell. So he's got 15 minutes of a candidate that won't, that he's leading with that he won't even get an, can't even get an interview from. And is that typical? Is that atypical? Is that just the current state of the relationship? Because it's really maybe a ratings thing. Well, I imagine they had that topic and whether or not she gave the interview, they were going to go with it. I mean, it would have definitely added to the credibility of the interview. But when you think of the broadcast medium as a whole, it's usually played more to the sensational if you want more information. And it's not to say bad things about the broadcast media because it's playing to the strength, the visual strength. And if you wanted more in-depth coverage of something, usually you would find that in print media. And it seems like a, a lot more of this media race is geared towards the sensational aspects. And we're seeing more of it on the television, but what we're not really getting, as you said, is sort of that background issue. The background issue is what they really stand for, as opposed to just finding out the ridiculous things that they do. And she, I, I saw an interview with her where she actually said she'd rather give an interview to the uh, newspaper in Delaware than to it. Why would I need to give national media an interview to begin with? I'm not running for a national office. So I don't. At least the Delaware newspaper has gone to her picnics and church functions and has they've gotten a few mm. interviews from her. Print has done that too. Print has followed them based on these kind of, well, let's say offbeat things that all these candidates, see. and what it seems to work for them. I mean, they're getting, they're getting airtime because uh, and of she's it. she's certainly getting and print, national print, They're getting ink for it. Mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. a witch. I'm not a witch. Or and I'm she made a whole girl. commercial around that. So, <laughs> whole, you know, campaign uh, thing around that too. Um, and I guess I, and I understand that they can't, that they're having trouble getting the interviews, but I guess the question is, I was talking to you just right before you came over here, and um, one of the things I had found, it was a couple of weeks ago, Pew Research had been looking at the news cycle the week of the 4th through 10th of uh, um, October, and absolutely the ele midterm elections are dominating the news, but what is dominating the news within that news hole? Are things such as Carl Palladino arguing with a New York Post reporter. Saying that he uh, was going to take him out. Take him out. Then he appears on Bill O'Reilly to somehow justify this um, on Fox News. And also that was the same week that one of the staffers from Jerry Brown's office in California made a derogatory remark, was caught on tape making a derogatory remark about Republican uh, Meg Whitman. Mm -hmm. And what, how does that serve really the, the, the people? other than to give them time, to give these campaigns airtime and ink for these things. So, Steve, I'm wondering what you think about this in particular, because I really can take this back, and I realized what I did today. I'm paying a little homage to Sarah Palin right now. <laughs> but I, I can trace it back to Palin being the Republican nominee and the way she felt, at least, mm -hmm. that she was treated by the media. And now these Palin-backed candidates aren't giving interviews to many media outlets. And I, I know that part of it is her saying, why would you do that? You're not running for president or vice president. You're running in the state of Nevada. So mm -hmm. why give Anderson Cooper? And so I, that one that we're gonna watch, that I'm gonna show is Sharon Angle ditching the media, and they're all doing mm -hmm. it. And well, I think what you have to understand, of course, is that they can do it. Uh, there was, of course, a time in this country when, back probably when you were still in short pants, when there was only a few major media outlets in the country, and we didn't have the proliferation of, uh, of media we have today. Uh, and so what the, the problem is, I think, is that there are so many media going after a finite number of uh, candidates that, in fact, these candidates can pick and choose who they're going to talk to. Uh, certainly 20, 30 years ago, it would have been inconceivable for a candidate for a Senate or for a national office to disregard talking to NBC News or CBS or the, or, or the Wall, Wall Street Journal. Um, but now you can do that. You, you, you're not beholden to any one block of, of media, which is, which is important because understand that the relationship between politicians and the media is sort of a, a deal brokered in Hades. I mean, they, these are... Uh, these are uh, relationships of convenience. That in fact, that you know, the media covers politicians because politicians are making news, and politicians talk to the media because the media can get them exposed to the people who are going to vote for them. So that's that's uh, that's the bargain. And right now, 
Um, you, know, you don't have to talk to Anderson Cooper if you don't want to because you have other medium you can use. You can, you can stay with the newspapers in Delaware or you can stay in some kind of other regionalized or specialized type of me, uh, media outlet. And so, for one, I'm not surprised, nor do I blame politicians for ditching the media because the media themselves are now been so fragmented. You get yourself noticed by doing something outrageous, and so why take the chance of being the subject or the object of an outrageous media act? And so I, uh, I, I can certainly understand these various politicians taking the tack they're taking, and I think it's a trend we're going to see just probably expand, proliferate, and accelerate in future election cycles. <coughs> Just from my own observation, it seems like this election cycle has exposed it, and that mm -hmm. the last election cycle started it. Now, started the realization within uh, candidates that they don't have to talk to the media, really. And it's really kind of an egotistical attitude. You need me for ratings more than I need you for votes, is at least the theme that I've seen. Well, actually, historically, you can probably go back 60 years if you want to. I mean, you can go back. I think probably the very first example of what you're talking about is probably Nixon's checkers speech. I actually had, we, thought about Nixon's speech. Okay, I wonder about I mean, he, he actually goes to the airwaves to actually make a pitch to try and resurrect his flagging uh, prospects being on the, uh, the ticket with Eisenhower back in 52. And basically what he did is he did an end run around the media and that taught Nixon a very important lesson that you don't, you know, you don't need these flacks to get your message out now that you have what was then the very, very new medium of television. I think, and television, of course, is, you know, just an old, tired horse compared to the thoroughbreds we have now in the media, you know, like, you know the internet and the blogosphere mm -hmm. and such.